Greetings. It is I, Mark, aka the Arachnoholic, and joining me for today's video is Chewy, my Honduran curly hair tarantula. You know, ever since I was a kid and I first saw an image of a Mexican red knee tarantula in one of my science textbooks, I've always been fascinated with spiders, especially tarantulas. Not only was I interested in them, I also was always under the assumption that every tarantula looked, acted, and behaved the exact same way. It wasn't until I actually took a deeper interest in these animals and began doing my own research into them that I realized just how diverse they are. So we have tarantulas that live on the ground beneath fallen debris, but we also have ones that have adapted to life up in the treetops. In addition, we also have those that have evolved to live below the ground in burrows. And that's exactly what we're gonna be discussing in today's video, are the different lifestyles of these tarantulas, as well as highlighting a few key species that really stick out in each of these groups. So I hope you all are looking forward to this video. Um, if you haven't already, definitely drop me a like, subscribe. I do have a Patreon now, which I'll be posting exclusive content to, including live streaming, early access, that sort of stuff. So a lot of cool stuff coming up. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the video. This here is an adult avicularia ronchinseni, known commonly as the Goliath Picto tarantula. She is an arboreal tarantula, meaning her species has adapted to life up in the trees, far above the forest floor. Rather than create a burrow, she uses her silk to create a thick tube-like web that will serve as her hide. As you can see, she has sort of done that here with this very, very impressive web hammock that she has spun in her enclosure. Now, one interesting thing to note about our arboreal tarantulas is that there exists a few different ways in which they construct their homes. And as a result, we can almost sort of break down our arboreal species into their own smaller categories. So we have our avicularia, such as this one, that are, quote, true arboreals. You'll almost never see one of these come down to the ground unless they are sick, dying, or very, very hungry. They spend the majority of their time way up in the treetops in the wild and in captivity. You'll almost always see them in the top portion of their enclosures. Some arboreals, such as our postalotherias, as well as Samopoia species, including this Venezuelan sun tiger here, they actually will exhibit a lot of times terrestrial tendencies, especially as spiderlings and juveniles, and will even burrow when they're really small. Some have even gone as far as to label these tarantulas as being semi-arboreals, which is a term I don't use too often myself to describe them, though I can certainly understand the temptation. As physiologically, they are still built and exhibit all the features that an arboreal tarantula would have, such as the flattened legs, that assist them with climbing up smooth surfaces, as well as having a lighter build than terrestrial species. And as adults, they are typically still found in trees or in some type of vertical surface out in the wild that is considered to be above ground level, which would not really make them terrestrials, at least not in my opinion. And before the tarantula police come at me with their nightsticks, these are just my personal feelings and observations on the matter. I am no biologist or arachnologist, so I certainly encourage anyone watching this to do your own research on the subject 
rather than just take everything I have to say verbatim. Anyway, your Pokies and Salmopoeus are rather intriguing in that regard because while they do exhibit arboreal tendencies, like I said, and are found above ground level in the wild, they tend to construct their webs lower to the ground, especially compared to Auriviculares, which make theirs way up in the canopies. And what they do is they create, well, almost kind of a, like a little web castle. As you can see, our sun tiger has dug all the way down to the bottom of her enclosure. And then she has her web tunnel that extends from the ground about three quarters of the way up to the enclosure. So almost up to the top of it, actually. And then last, but certainly not least, we have the postletherias or the ornamental tarantulas, which are native to India as well as Sri Lanka. This here is my adult female P. regalis, which is the Indian ornamental. Now this genus includes some of the largest arboreal tarantulas out there, as well as some of the largest old world tarantulas. In the wild, there are a lot of times found inside of tree holes or crevices. In captivity, they will sometimes burrow when they're really young. However, as they mature, they seem to leave the ground more often and become more and more arboreal. Which is very, very interesting. However, I still house mine as I would any arboreal by giving them a tall enclosure, something to climb on, which is a cork bark slab, which she has, and also a couple of branches for her to climb and web on. Now, as spiderlings and even as juvies, sometimes pokies will web quite extensively. However, as adults, they, they aren't quite as prolific when it comes to webbing, especially when compared to many other arboreal species. They may construct a little web curtain behind whatever decor you provide them with, which she has done, but it's usually not going to be anything as prolific as your Salmopoeus or Avicularia species, which a lot of times will web up there entire enclosures just about let's see if we can get a look at it it's kind of hard with this angle but she's made a a dirt curtain back there so she went behind her cork bark branch here and made a a big old web sheet back there and she has taken all these chunks of substrate as well as the sphagnum the moss that I put on the floor of her enclosure and decorated her webbing with it. There now you guys can probably see it a little bit more clear. Looks like she's added a little bit more to it actually. But yeah, that's generally about all you're going to get with a, an adult postlotheria. Like I said, they can web somewhat heavy, but it's it's normally going to be concentrated to one particular part of their enclosure. It's not going to be the entire enclosure that gets webbed up like our Avicularis species or our, our Salmopoeus. Next, we have our terrestrial tarantulas, which you can technically break this group into two different smaller groups. So we have our opportunistic burrowers, such as this Afonopelma samani or Costa Rican zebra, which basically these are tarantulas that will burrow if they are provided with a proper setup to do so. However, most of them will also be completely content as long as they are provided with a log or cork bark or something to take shelter under. Generally, it's still a good idea to fill the enclosure at least halfway 
you could even go three quarters of the way with substrate um, as this will provide them with some extra cushion in case they fall as even though they are not always the most nimble of climbers a lot of terrestrial tarantulas will still attempt to climb up the sides of their enclosures. So some tarantulas that fit into this category include the Brachypelma genus, the Afonopelma genus, and the Gramostolas. Two species worth noting are the Chromatopelma cyaneopubescens, or the green bottle blue, as well as the Pteranoculus murinus, or the orange baboon. So both of these tarantulas have the basic stocky build of a terrestrial, although in the case of the green bottle blue, the legs are noticeably longer and more spindly. Both of these tarantulas will not only climb a good bit more than your typical terrestrial, but they also seem to be quite good at it. In fact, some folks have even labeled both of these species as being semi-arboreal, as they will spend a lot of time off the ground when young and will even construct their webs in a similar manner to many avicularia species. So this is most certainly one of those exceptions to where you could probably get away with housing yours in either a terrestrial or arboreal setup, though I have personally always used a terrestrial style enclosure for the ones I have owned. As adults, especially with the green bottle blue, they do tend to spend more time on the ground, thus becoming more terrestrial as they age. Both of these tarantulas are some of the heaviest webbers out there, producing copious amounts of silk in their enclosures, and create very intricate funnel webs with multiple entrances. This is especially intriguing in the case of the GBB, since generally, New World terrestrial species don't tend to do a whole lot of webbing. That's usually something that we see a lot more with our Old World species. So this tarantula is definitely unique and in a category of its own. And last but not least, we have our fossorial tarantulas, which have quickly risen to be my second favorite category, right after arboreals. Also known as obligate burrowers, these tarantulas are found below ground level, where they construct deep and oftentimes very elaborate burrows. Many also will line their burrows with silk, as well as do some webbing around the entrance. Now, not going to lie, initially the concept of a tarantula that spends basically 90% of its time hidden below ground and out of sight was something that sounded incredibly boring to me. However, there are ways that we can tweak our enclosures a bit in order to encourage these spider to burrow right alongside the glass where we will be able to get a good view of it even when it is hidden away. Some examples of these tarantulas include the Chilobrachis genus, the C. lividum or cobalt blue, and while this last one is somewhat up for debate by certain folks, I am going to include the Ephibopus genus in this category as well. A 5 to 10 gallon enclosure will still suffice for the majority of adult tarantulas in this category. The key is to provide them with a lot of substrate in order to encourage burrowing, as well as using a substrate that is solid and compact and won't collapse in on itself. A good rule of thumb is to fill the enclosure around halfway with substrate, although adding more most certainly won't hurt. You can also use a pencil or similar object to create a starter burrow for the tarantula. Using a mixture of one part pesticide-free topsoil and one part cocoa fiber or peat moss is a perfect substrate and will provide moisture as well as a solid structure for the tarantula to create a burrow with. Well, that's it for today's video, folks. I hope you all enjoyed this and found it informative. And don't forget to stay awesome.